So that as a source of attraction. Meanwhile, over at the male end of things, in terms of looking for other markers of attraction, in females, by the time you get to humans, we are not, again, external ovulators, but what you have with humans is the famed waist-hip ratio measure. And this one has been endlessly studied and argued about, the notion that the larger the size of the hips relative to the size of the waist, the greater the waist-hip ratio, no, the lesser the flipped it around the other way. Okay, the bigger the hips are relative to the waist, this is a marker of fertility. That is a marker of childbearing pelvises. That is a marker of all sorts of developmental health that augurs well for having a baby pass through the birth canal. In culture after culture, men find women to be more attractive who have a higher skewed ratio of hip to waist. So that's been studied all over the place. What you have, though, as the central controversy in that field is if every single culture that that's been studied in has been contaminated by their exposure to westernized culture and its pervasive values, which may be the source of that. So among the hip waist sort of zealots, what has been the, the golden fleece to go after what has been you know, the equivalent of getting identical twins separated at birth, what is the thing they go after is to find a population of humans who are having their first contact with the outside world and have had no exposure to the westernized world and thus you are able to rush in there, quickly master their language and once you've done that you get to ask them the first question in their entire content with the westernized world which is so, which of these look better to you of asking the guys there and at this point not surprisingly, there was not a huge literature of asking people on the first encounters about hip-waist ratios. What you see is the literature is mixed. When you look at more traditional societies, you do not necessarily see as strong of a hip-waist ratio a set of opinions, but nonetheless, at least some of that is universal in every culture that's been looked at. Again, as a marker of fertility. Meanwhile, over at the female end of things, you've already heard what some of the things are that are looked for in terms of responsiveness to secondary characteristics in males, which is jutting jaws, big high foreheads, and muscle mass. And all of these are assays indirectly of testosterone levels or testosterone exposure or sensitivity during adolescence. Those are preferred. Interesting thing studies showing that when you give women a choice of faces that of males that have been manipulated, changing the dramatic, how dramatic the secondary characteristics are, like forehead and jutting jawedness and angularity of face and stuff, what you see is an interesting dichotomy, which is in these studies, women on the average rate the rounder faced pictures of men, such men looking more likable, more honest, more trustworthy, and less desirable. Okay, so this is hopeless. And what do you know, those, well, I won't go there either. What those show is separable traits there, separable traits in terms of what's attractive, what information. And again, when you look at these studies, the differences are like, 5% difference in nostril width and things when they're manip These are extraordinarily subtle differences where people are not consciously aware of them. Which face looks more attractive? Which face would you like more? Which face would you trust more if they told you to vote for somebody or other? An interesting separation there. Okay, one additional one is that in women, when women are ovulating, they prefer more sexually secondary, secondary sexually characteristically dramatic male faces. At the time of ovulation, women rate as more attractive male faces with the juddier jaws and the greater muscle mass and the forehead stuff going on. What we see here is this theme of at the time that estrogen levels are at their highest in humans and lots of realms, in addition to other species, detection of pheromones from males is the most sensitive ability to pick up subtle differences in facial symmetry or secondary sexual characteristics 
characteristics are at their best and the preferences are derived from that, this is, in some cases, some rather substantial effects. Okay. 